Hello, and welcome to today's video. And, um, yeah, so today I just wanted to show off something that I find really cool that you can actually do with pow old world Power Macs that have open firmware. And basically what that is, is um, you can start the Mac, you can start the Power Mac, hold down Command, Option, O and F, like you do on Newton World Macs, but then if you have some sort of serial terminal hooked up to it, then you can even like, you know, then you can look at on the serial terminal, like it outputs to the serial terminal because it doesn't output to the display. So, yeah. Uh, let's get started. So, just for the sake of, you know, illustration in general, um, for those of you who do not know what the open firmware prompt on New World Max looks like, I will boot up my Power Mac G4 and drop into the open firmware prompt to demonstrate. It's a bit of a... It's a four key combination, but hopefully I've gotten all the keys pressed on the keyboard. But yeah, it's basically command, option, O, and F. There we go. So yeah, as you can see, here is open firmware. This is, let's see, open firmware version 4.1.8 F5. Well, that's boot ROM. I'm, and this is a Power Mac 3.4. And yeah, so, you know, this is actually very similar to the open boot firmware that Sun Machines use, which you've probably seen in other videos of mine. Um, but yeah, so just to just as something to run, let's run print ENV. So yeah, you have all the environment variables. And there are more. <laughs> but yeah, basically, this is. Well, Printing and V basically prints all the environment variables on the system. So. Yeah. So now that you know what it looks like on a New World machine, let's go to, let's go to my Power Mac 7600 and look at that. So now we are on a Power Book 1400 and let's open up Z-Term. And now the tolerance is for getting to the open firmware prompt on. These old world Macs are incredibly tight. You have to be very exact with like how you're pressing the keys and when. I'm not even sure if you can get to it from a cold boot. I've never been able to. Um, I've always had to reboot the machine from, you know, pre a previously booted state, but that's not going to keep me from trying. So, I am going to get all my fingers into position, <laughs> and then... first try. <laughs> per that's the first time I've been able to get it on the first try. But, um, anyway. So now let's do the same command. Print env. And as you can see, there are much fewer environment variables. And then also up here, you can see this is much 
earlier version. This is version 1.0.5 of open firmware. And look, buy or boot. I'm not, I actually wonder if buy it works in um, the newer open firmware versions. But yeah. And also another neat command is dev alias and this actually has some really good use because you know if you're working in open firmware sometimes you know like you need to know what command or like what one of these aliases is actually alias to so like as you can see um input device and output device are ttya which is the modem port I think because I at least I assume because this is hooked up using a serial cable to the modem port and um I assume TTYB is the printer port but you also have SCSI um the keyboard and actually there are ways you can set it up so that it will output the prompt to the monitor. I may or may not do that. Um, but yeah, so... Yeah, this is really all I wanted to show off. Although, so far I've been doing stuff entirely in like within like the old Mac sphere, but you don't actually need to use exclusively old Macs to do this. Here we have my workstation, and you'll probably recognize this as Putty, and this is the set that I used to film my Sun workstation. So by all logic, I should be able to do the same thing. So press the power button, Hold down the pro appropriate keys, and there we go. Open firmware 1.0.5, and then, yeah. So yeah. And then... So yeah, this is just really cool to me. Ever since I learned that this was a thing that you could do, I was, I've been really happy just because like I love, I love random stuff like this. It's, it's so cool to me. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. And before I leave, in case you're curious what sort of monstrous cable I needed to actually do this on a PC? Well, <laughs> let's just deconstruct this cable a bit. So the first part takes the 8-pin mini DIN serial of the Power Mac and adapts it to 25-pin D-sub miniature, DB25. Now this is a cable that you can... It really comes with most modems, because a lot, a lot of modems, at least the modems that I've seen, don't have 8-pin um, mini DIN. They just have that cable for Macintosh users. Next up, we have this, which adapts DB25 to DE9. Next up is a DE9 to DE9 null modem cable. Now, you could also use a null modem adapter, but um, because of the way that everything has been gendered on, on my combination of cables, the, the full cable made more sense. And then finally, 
the USB serial adapter, and this adapts DE9 serial to USB. And if you're wondering what cable I used on the when when using my PowerBook, it is really your basic printer serial cable. Mini DIN eight to Mini DIN eight. But anyway, yeah, thank you so much for watching. This was really just a quick, fun video to showcase something I found cool. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you next time.